Hello, my name is Anshika and welcome to my course, Part 3, Creating an Azure Blob Storage Account for Azure Search. So in the previous video, we have talked about the introduction to Azure Search, process of Azure Search, creating an Azure Search via the portal and we have also discussed about the various pricing tiers available and what are admin and query keys. And in this video, we will talk about the basics of blob storage. We will examine the features of blob storage and what are the different kinds of blobs available. What are access tiers in a blob and then we will create a storage account and after that we will learn how to upload and download the files and secure them in a service. So what is a blob? Blob stands for binary large object. And blobs can be any kind of file from documents and media file to logs and website files. And storing so much amount of data is a challenge for every organization. Cost effective storage is a very compelling reason in itself for an organization to move to the cloud. And Azure Blob Storage delivers on that. And Microsoft Azure Blob Storage integrates tightly with other Azure services to help you build powerful storage rich based solutions. But before discussing about the blob storage, let's discuss about what are storage accounts. Azure storage account is a parent container in the subscription and a blob service is created within. Depending upon the storage account, it can contain a blob storage, a file storage, a table storage or a queue storage. Let's just quickly go over these services. So a blob storage is an object storage solution that is optimized for storing massive amount of unstructured data like documents or binary data like image files or video or even virtual machine images. What is a file storage? A file storage is similar to a blob storage but it supports the SMB protocol. And SMB protocol means that you can attach the storage to the virtual machines for the read or write access. And what is a table storage? A table storage is a NoSQL data store that allows you to store massive amount of structured non-relational data. And it is a good choice for web applications. And last is queue storage. Queue storage is used to store and retrieve messages. So it helps in building asynchronous reliable applications that are based on messages. All of these different services share feature of parent storage account and are built as a group via the storage account. And these storage account services expose a REST based endpoint to the internet for accessing data and administrating the different services. And these URLs are used to communicate with each service. Among these, we will be only discussing about the blob storage and rest we will discuss later. Now we understand that a blob storage service is created within a storage account. Let's talk about the types of blob that gets stored in a blob service. The term blob is an acronym for binary large object. So a blob itself can be any kind of file, a document, image, video, VM disk or a database. But when uploading a file, you need to categorize the type of file and how that file will be treated in Azure. One thing to note here is that once a blob is created in Azure, you cannot change its type. And now let's discuss about the types of blob. The blob is categorized into three types blob blob, append blob and page blob. Blob blobs are the blobs that are broken down into smaller units called blocks and these are used to store text and binary data with a maximum size of about 4.7 terabytes. Blob blobs are made up of blocks of data that can be managed individually. And what are append blobs? Append blobs are made up of blocks that are optimized for append operations. Append blobs are ideal for scenarios in which we want to add some data to an existing blob. 
And what are page blob? Page blob is used to store random access files up to 8 terabytes in size. Page blob is store virtual hard disk drives and serve as the disk for Azure virtual machines. Now let's discuss about the various access tiers for blob that will be used while creating the blob storage account. So what are access tiers for a blob storage account? Azure Storage provides different options for accessing blob blob data based on the usage patterns. By selecting the right access tier for your needs, you can store blob blob data in a most cost efficient manner. And the blob storage access tiers are divided into three types. First, hot storage access tier. Second, cool storage access tier. And the third is the archive storage access tier. So what is a hot storage access tier? Hot access tier is optimized for frequent access of objects in a storage account. Accessing data in the hot access tier is the most cost efficient while the storage costs are higher. The cool access tier is optimized for storing large amount of data that is infrequently accessed and is stored for at least 30 days. Storing data in the cool access tier is the most cost efficient but accessing data is more expensive. The archive access tier is available only for individual block blobs. The archive tier is optimized for data that can tolerate several hours of retrieval latency and that will remain in archive tier for at least 180 days. One thing to note here is that Changing the access tiers from hot to cool, for example, will incur charges. Now, let's look into the Microsoft Azure storage redundancy and why it is required. Microsoft Azure Cloud Provider has data centers all over the world within different regions. And every region can have one or more multiple zones and they are isolated from each other. And each zone can have one or more multiple data centers with independent power, cooling and networking. Now, think about if Microsoft data center goes down. What happens if the entire region and their data center also goes down? And what will happen in case of the disaster? So to solve this business problem, Azure Local Redundant Storage, Zone Redundant Storage, Geo Redundant Storage and Read Access Geo Redundant Storage has helped us. The locally redundant storage helps to replicate our data in the same data center and it is a low cost data redundancy technique and it provides at least 99% of durability of objects over a given year and this is helpful when we can easily reconstruct the data even in case of data loss. The zone redundant storage helps us for excellent performance, low latency and replicates our data synchronously across three storage clusters in a single region. ZRS offers durability for storage of objects at least 99% over a given year. The next is the geo redundant storage. It helps us in replicating our data to another region which is far hundreds of miles away from the primary region. It provides at least 99% of durability of objects over a given year. But the data will be available to be read only if the Microsoft initiates a failure from the primary to the secondary region. And last is the read access geo redundant storage. It is based on the GRS, but it also provides the option to read from the secondary region regardless of whether the Microsoft initiates a failover from the primary to the secondary region. Now let's go to the Azure portal and create a storage account. I have logged into the Azure portal and now for creating an Azure account, let's click on create a resource and search for storage account. We'll click on create. Since we have already created a resource group while creating the Azure search, I will choose the same resource group as Anshika RG. Now let's give a storage account a name and it should be unique and it will be a part of the URL endpoint 
that will be used to access the blog. For the performance, there are two options available, either standard or premium. When we choose the standard option, we get three account kind option as storage v1, storage v2 and blob storage. And the replication options available are LRS, ZRS, GRS, RHERS, GZRS and RAGZRS. But when we choose the premium option, we get four types of account, the storage v2 storage, blob blob storage and file storage. But for the replication, we only get one option that is LRS. So for the demo purpose, we will choose the standard option. For the access tier, we will choose the hot access tier because for searching purpose, we will be needing the documents very frequently. Now let's click on the next tab. Here in the networking, we can choose our blob can be connected by all the networks or you want your blob to be accessed by particular networks. So for the demo, we will choose the public endpoint. Next is the advanced tab, secure transfer required. We have enabled it because we want the HTTPS to be used when accessing the blob. When we want the large file to be shared, we can enable this option. Next is the blob soft delete. Soft delete basically protects blob data from being accidentally deleted or erroneously modified. When the soft delete is enabled for a storage account, blobs, blob version and a snapshot in that storage can be recovered after they were either modified or deleted. So for demo, we can disable it. Next comes the option for the data lake. Data lake is itself is a very huge topic. So we can discuss about this in an another video session. Now let's click on the next. The tags are basically used to find the resources for the billing purpose. We can do that later as well. On the review and create, you can see all of the options we have selected. And now let's click on the create. The creating will take a while. I will get back once it is created. Here we see that the resource is successfully created. Let's click on go to the resource. So on the overview plate, you can see the location, storage account type, the replication type and the performance or the access tier. Below are the services for the storage account. And we can also get to these services from the menu on the left. So we'll go to the containers under the blob service. Here we don't have any containers yet. Let's click on create. Let's give the container a name, for example, doc file. Next is the public access level. So we will choose the container for anonymous read access for the containers and the blob. Let's click on create. Here we can see that a doc file container is created. So under the container, we have to upload some files. So we can upload the files by clicking on the upload option and from here I will choose the Microsoft Word document and click on the advanced option. In the blob type we have three options blog blob, page blob and append blob. We will choose the blog blob. You can also choose the block size from here. Next comes the access tier. You can choose either of the access tier but we will go with the hot access tier. If you want your file to be uploaded in a particular folder, you can write the folder name and the folder will be created. And now let's click on upload. The file is uploaded successfully and here we can see that the access tier chosen is hot and the blob type chosen is as block blob. You can also download the file from here on the right. And you can also change the access tier from here. Uploading the documents in Azure Blob Storage can be done in a variety of ways. First is via the portal, which we have seen. Second is using the AZ command from the CLI. And third is using the .NET code. So in this session, we have learned about the basics of Blob Storage. We have examined the features of Blob Storage. What are the different kinds of blobs available? What are the access tiers available in the blob? And after that, we have created an Azure account and learned how we can upload and download the files in the Azure storage blob. And in the next session, we will learn how these blob storage documents can be searched with 
Azure search. Thank you and in case of any questions please comment.